Please title these notes limits for notes in determinate form. So let's say that we have a problem like this where we're taking that 4, we're plugging it in for x as sort of our first stab at it. And what we get is that 4 squared minus 16 and 4 minus 4 gives us 0 over 0. Well, if we look back at our limits to notes, we saw that 0 over 0 is called, gets, creates a removable discontinuity. The limit's going to be a number. And this lesson is our time to go and figure out exactly what that number is. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to find limits when there is the indeterminate form, both using factoring and a L'Hopital's rule for the real stumpers. So this implies or indicates there's a removable discontinuity like that, basically. There's just a little uh, place where the y value is not existent, but overall it's a smooth curve except for at that one point. Um, and as the name implies, a removable discontinuity can be removed to allow us to determine what the function wants to be, what value it wants to have at that point. We remove a removable discontinuity by manipulating the expression until something cancels out. You see, for each function that has a whole or a removable discontinuity in it, the function behaves just like a function without that whole, except at one point. So if we can find the equation that behaves like the function with the whole. We can then substitute for x to find the limit. For example, let's look at x plus 4 versus x squared minus 16 over x minus 4, which if we factor this we see it's x plus 4, x minus 4 over x minus 4. And these x minus 4 and x minus 4, this cancels out for every value except 4.
And so what's going on is that this function, right here, y equals x plus 4, let's see, it's just a line like that. And then this one is exactly the same because when x is 3, when x is 2, when x is a million, these two are going to be exactly equal to each other and cancel out. But when x exactly equals 4, it's undefined because we're not allowed to divide by 0. Oops. However, we can see that when x is 4 over here, we can see what the function wants to be and what it would be if that removable discontinuity weren't there. So the idea for this piece that we're learning how to do is that we basically just want to find something and cancel it out. Because when we cancel it out, we're going to get a function that is just like the one that we have, except for that whole or removable discontinuity is gone. So we're going to start off with removing holes by factoring. First, check to make sure that you need to do anything, because remember, some of these you just have to plug in the numbers and they work out just fine. Uh, these ones aren't going to because they're obviously in the uh, section of the notes where we're practicing this new technique, but it's always important to check just because when you're actually looking at a real problem, doesn't always you don't always need to use these techniques. So this is removable discontinuity. So, let's factor. Something's got to cancel out, and then we're good to go. So this is going to equal limit as x approaches 5. Let's factor the numerator, factor the denominator. Uh, negative 30, positive x, that's x plus 6, x minus 5, which makes sense. One of them should be in the bottom because we want it to cancel out. And so we can cancel because, because we're not evaluating it at 5. We're saying as we get really close to 5, but not exactly at it. So this means this behaves like the limit as x approaches 5 of x plus 6. Now we can just plug that in. And there's our limit. If we didn't have that hole, that removable discontinuity, the graph would be, the function would be equal to 11 when x was 5. So that's the gist of it. Let's do a few more examples like that. Again, always check that you need to. So negative 3 plus 3 negative 3 squared minus 9, that is indeed 0 over 0. So it's going to be the limit as x approaches negative 3. Let's factor this. Okay, so we just have to plug that negative 3 in there. Once we've got a number, we're happy. Sometimes our factoring can be a smidgen more complicated.
clear, rather than doing our normal diamond or box method, we can just factor out common factors. First though, we should check and make sure that we need to. So if we put in zero, we have three times zero cubed plus five times zero squared, nine times zero cubed minus 20 zero squared. That emphatically equals zero over zero. So we should see we can factor and cancel. So I can factor out an x squared. That leaves me with 3x plus 5. I can factor out an x squared here, which leaves me with 9x minus 20. These cancel out, so this is a limit as x approaches 0. 3x plus 5 over 9x minus 20. Now when I substitute that 0 in, it's not such a big deal. 3 times 0 plus 5 over 9 times 0 minus 20. Those subtract to be 0, so we just have 5 over negative 20 or negative 1 fourth. So that's the general idea of it. Uh, sometimes we have to massage uh, the equations a little bit before canceling. So some adding or subtracting or combining of like terms kind of thing. So let's look at this one. Um, limit as, let's say another variable, let's say h approaches 0. It doesn't always have to be x. Let's say we've got 5 um, x plus h minus 5x all over h. Uh, notice this x is just along for the ride. We'll see what happens to it. This h is going to be 0. Um, and we notice that if we just plug it in, we've got 5x plus 5 h minus 5x over h. If we plug 0 in for h, we're going to get, let's see, so this is 0, this is 0, 5x minus 5x plus 0 is 0, so it is indeed 0 over 0. So right now we're not seeing anything that really cancels out uh, terribly well here. Um, but let's see if we can just sort of distribute and find like terms and see if we can get anything. So let's distribute this 5. 5x plus 5h minus 5x all over h. 5x minus 5x is 0, so we just have 5h over h. Oh, looky there, that cancels out. Limit as h approaches 0 of 5, or just plain old 5. This factoring and canceling technique is the main one that you need for finding limits that have the indeterminate form 0 over 0. There are an assortment of other techniques that were used when limits were first being worked with extensively before the development of the derivative, uh, and there's something to be said for going back and working on them. Uh, there's squeeze theorem, there is the uh, rationalizing the numerator, um, but since we already know how to take derivatives, both of those are made irrelevant by the application of what's called L'Hopital's rule. This one actually uh, can be done with L'Hopital's rule as well. It's a very, very useful piece. But these ones are sort of very common, and I want you to have some skill and some working with the actual working through of the limits as if you didn't have the calculus background yet, like the early mathematicians didn't. Um, but if you are ever in a situation where you have something like this, um, or infinity over infinity, either one, you can use what's called a L'Hopital's rule, and let's look at what that is. So this is for the stumper problems. And let's first look at when you can use this. So if and only if you try the initial substitution and get 
either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. You can most likely use Elopidal's rule to get the limit. There's one very important thing. Never use this if you have a number, a non-zero number over zero or anything except zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And Lapidus rule is very simple and very powerful. And there's the temptation to use it all the time. Do not succumb. You can only use it in these circumstances. Basically only use it if everything else has failed. So this is a rule. The limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x. So if we were looking at something like here, where we've got x approaching some number, we've got some function over some other function. It turns out that that is the same as if you take the limit as x approaches a of the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom function. Note this is not the quotient rule. It is not f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. It is not really parallel to anything else we've seen before. It's its own separate thing. What this means you take the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator then find the limit again the answer is the same as the original limit you were looking for. If you get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity again, you can repeat the process. So, let's say we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x. Well, if I try it with my substitution first, This tells me that there is a removable discontinuity. It's the indeterminate form, it's called. Um, but I can't factor that. Sine x, x, those don't factor. Uh, so I can't use my original technique. And because it's 0 over 0, I can use L'Hopital's rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that this is the same as the limit as x approaches 0 of the derivative of sine of x over the derivative of x. So the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of x is 1. And now, whoops, I should have a limit still written in there. And now 
when I substitute that in, cosine of 0 over 1 is 1 over 1 is 1. And there's my limit. This can normally be done with the squeeze theorem, but Ad L'Hopital's rule works beautifully for it. I can do this. This is the same as one we were doing earlier with factoring. I plug that 3 in, I get 3 squared minus 9 over 3 minus 3, or 0 over 0. So yes, I can use that L'Hopital's rule if I want. I can also factor. We did that one earlier. But we're practicing the rules, so we're going to take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. I always want to forget to write that limit. Bad Ms. M. Bad Ms. M. <laughs> limit as x approaches 3, so take the derivative of that top one, that's 2x. Derivative of the bottom is 1. And now when I substitute that 3 in, there we go. Same thing as we would have gotten the other way. We can also do much funkier problems. This one would typically be done with what's called rationalizing the numerator. You might hear that and think it's a little funky because didn't we rationalize the denominator in pre-calc? And yes, we did. This is a related technique, but something a little bit different. Um, basically, what happens with this one is if we put that 2 in, we see that it is indeed a situation where we get 0 over 0, 2 minus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Um, and basically the problem with this is that it's kind of been over factored. Um, we would basically be wanting to go back a step, multiply by the numerator except with the sign reversed in order to make this turn into something that doesn't equal 0 over 0. It's sort of not quite the opposite of factoring, but it's kind of like kind of like it's been factored too far. We won't, we won't want to undo that. Um, but this technique takes a lot of time um, and it has a lot of places for things to go wrong. And uh, it could really be done just as easily by taking the derivative. So remember that this is to the 1 half power. We're going to do the derivative of x minus 1 to the 1 half minus 1 over the derivative of x minus 2. So we'll bring that down, 1 half x minus 1 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of x minus 1. Derivative of negative 1 is 0. Derivative of x minus 2 is 1. So this is 1 over 2 square root x minus 1. Derivative of x minus 1 is 1. This is all over 1. So now we can just substitute that in. 1 over 2 square root of 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 half. And L'Hopital's rule can also be used when we're working with infinities. So limit as x approaches infinity. These were the problems in uh, limits 3. So let's say we have x over e to the x, and we're trying to find the limit. And it's really not clear in this It's really not clear which of these is a bigger infinity in a sense, um, although it is e to the x, um, incidentally. Um, but these don't really cancel neatly. They don't, there's really no good way to simplify them like we were doing. We can't say behaves like, because we've already narrowed it down to one term per numerator and per denominator, and we still don't know what to do with it. Um, and so this is a situation where L'Hopital's rule is really, 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 really useful.
because what's happening here is that this is going to be an infinitely large number and this is going to be an infinitely large number. And so we kind of think of it as that indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. We can't really substitute in infinity, but think of it. infinity over infinity. And if we have that, that means that we can use Alapital's rule again. If it was 1 over a really large number, or if it was a really large number over 10 or whatever, no. No dice. It's only when it's really large over really large. This is why I taught you the other way of doing things in limits 3, simply because for uh, the problems that we were working with, this, for example, or Oops, that's the wrong set page. Um, these wouldn't necessarily be ones that you would do more easily using El Abital's rule, um, because they're pretty straightforward to do as long as you have the pattern down. This one, however, is not easy to do. So let's turn that into the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of x over the derivative of e to the x. Derivative of x is 1, derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And now we're looking at, as this gets very, 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 very large, what we have is we have a positive number over a large positive. Positive divided by a positive is a positive. Any number divided by a very, very large number is going to get closer and closer and closer to zero. So we could do this one. This is the one where we said earlier that this and this are the two biggest exponents. Behaves like the limit as x approaches infinity, x cubed divided by 2x cubed cancels out. That's how we've done it. Or we could also do it because this is going to be infinity or infinitely large. This is going to be infinitely large. Limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative x cubed plus 4x over the derivative 2x cubed minus 1. Now, with this one, if we put in infinitely large numbers, we're still going to get infinity over infinity, so repeat. This is the limit actually I'll put it on the next line just so we keep it nice and clear. That's going to be 6x over 12x. The limit thereof and if we put an infinitely large number, we still have an infinitely large number over an infinitely large number, so we can do it again.
finally, no x's left, no need to worry about the infinity, it's one half. Same thing as we had up there. So you see it's a lot easier and a lot faster to do it this way, but this also works just fine. One thing to also be aware of, this is our last piece, Sometimes you'll encounter um, limits where you have two parts added together or two limits multiplied together uh, or something like that. It's good to know these rules. Basically the general idea is if it makes it easier, limits can be split up. The most critical one limit of f of x plus g of x is the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x. That's the same as the derivative rules. This one is not. The limit of f of x times g of x is the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x. Basically with these is just anything that you have, you just stick another limit in there and you're good to go. Um, but this is, it's not the product rule, it's its own special thing. So don't mess up the product rule just because I'm showing you this one. Yeah. Limit of f of x over g of x, likewise, again not the quotient rule, so don't use this when you're doing derivatives. It's only, 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 only works for limits. Um, and a couple where k is a constant. Limit of k times f of x. This one is like the derivative rules. k times the limit of f of x. And also the limit as x approaches some letter c of k where k is a constant is just k. Because there's no x for us to plug in for. So when it comes to doing problems, here's an example one. Limit as x approaches zero, sine x over x plus three. This, when we put in zero over zero, we're gonna get division by zero, and this is going to be 0 over 0, so it's going to be problematic. And normally we want to do some sort of like factoring or something like that. Um, but there's this plus 3 running around and it's kind of icky and it could cause problems. So the nice thing with this is to know that we can just look at these completely separately. So separate them, don't worry about them. Looking at this one, we have the indeterminate form, so we can use El Hospital's rule. And this one, uh, there is no x, there's nothing to plug in, the limit is just 3. Derivative of sine is cosine. derivative of x is 1, and the plus 3 is along for the ride. Cosine of 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 4. One more example. These limit rules aren't quite as super necessary when we're just uh, plugging and canceling, evaluating, that kind of thing. I think we tend to do them fairly automatically, just short of using them because it makes kind of intuitive sense. This is most useful when you have part of it that you need to use El Hospital's rule on and part of it that you don't. So for example, let's say that we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity of x over e to the x plus 1 over x squared. And the thing is is that if we put in these infinities, it's really unclear what we're going to end up with because we've got infinity in the denominator, we've got infinity in the numerator and denominator again and all that kind of thing. So let's split this up into two of them and see if that makes life any better.
because we have a lot of tools for working with things that are in this form, where it's just something divided by something else. And if we can separate them out, then we can just do this part and this part separately. So over here we've got infinity over infinity. We don't have a good way to cancel that out or circle the biggest one and see what it divides out to be. No luck. So we can use Alapithal's rule on that one. But this one over here, we're just saying that we've got 1 divided by a very, very, very large number in the denominator. And we know from our rules earlier uh, back in uh, limits 3 that a number divided by a very, very, very large number approaches 0. So over here we've got limit as x approaches infinity, 1 over e to the x this has become 0, and lo and behold, now we can look at this and see this is also going to become 1 divided by a very, very, very large number. So it's also going to become 0, and there we go. This concludes Limits for Notes.